hey and welcome to Piggy Power. Thanks for watching. Today, coil spring on a Peugeot 207. Let's put a fancy new one in, shall we? Peugeot 207, the struts are all pretty much the same no matter what the engine, and the basics of removing the certain items in a certain order, again the same no matter what the model, uh, estate, etc, diesel, petrol, all pretty much the same. We're putting in a nice new spring today. We're presuming you've already got the vehicle jacked up and safely positioned on an axle stand with perhaps a backup as well. And let's show you in perhaps why we're going to do this. Maybe this is a problem you've experienced too. So you might be able to see in there. Core spring's actually snapped. This results in lower right height one side and a knocking, an obvious knocking usually, and sometimes a creaking or even a crack occasionally as the spring splits around, uh, turns around and jumps on the bottom seat. So yeah, the vehicle's up and safe. Let's show you the tools you're going to need to do this. So to replace your spring on your Peugeot 207, other than jack, axle stands and a new spring, something to take your wheel off with is probably a good idea. They're generally a 17mm. I'll put that aside, but we assume you're going to need that anyway, you know that. A couple of hammers, copper's handy, still not too bad. Something to help, you know, release the, the old rusties. Sockets wise, 13, 16, 19, 21, 30. Uh, and then some little tools here, this is a 7mm Allen key, or Allen head, um, and a T30 Torx. I think it's a T30, yeah, for the anti-roll bar, sometimes it's a, an 8mm or a 6mm Allen as well. 16mm spanner, 19mm spanner, something to turn the sockets with, obviously those two, and then a punch, uh, a blunt chisel and a punch, a couple of levers, and these which are spring compressors. You're either going to need a special tool, for a couple hundred quid to get like a, a pneumatic one, they're great, but if you're just using it once every now and again like a hobby, well those spring compressors are about £20 usually, and if used safely, they'd work just fine. Alternatively, you can take your strut with broken spring and new spring to a garage with a spring compressor and they might charge a tenner, uh, maybe a pack of beers to do it for you and then they do the dangerous bit for you. So there we go, let's get into actually removing the strut now to get at the spring. So first we're just going to give all the nuts and bolts a spray with some sort of release fluid, uh, anti-roll bar link joints, the nut that holds the brake hose on and the nut that at the back which cramps on to the strut. Give them a wire wheel too. Now to remove the centre nut on the drive shaft you either lower it and put a socket through the wheel or put a punch of some sort in the disc and then you can undo it by hand. Have someone on the foot brake. Alternatively we got a cheat gum so let's use the cheat gum. This is what you need your 30mm socket for. It's gonna be pretty tight as you see. So 30mm remove it all the way and then either put it on the end of the threads to protect it or use a copper hammer to give it a smack just to make sure that it's moving. We well, shouldn't have to remove the shaft but it's good to have the movement in it so it doesn't pop out the gearbox when you're trying to get the strut out. Next we're going to remove the anti-roll bar link which is a 16mm or 17 It's spun this time so we're going to have to use the other tools which was a 16mm spanner. Again they're sometimes they're 17s and then the T30 Torx in the middle. Give it a good smack in if it's uh, not sitting in there nicely. You'll have to hold the one and turn the other to undo the nut. They used to have spanner slots on them, they were much easier, but now they do this nasty Torx in the middle. Or sometimes it's an Allen head, like a 6mm or an 8mm or a 7mm at times even. But that's what we're going to do today, as this is the design of this anti-roll bar link. Yours might be different. Or you might have the joy that when you just buzz the nut off, it just comes off anyway. Either way, We'll have it off and put that aside in a little tray somewhere so you don't lose it. You might need a little lever just to take the tension of the anti-roll bar off and then pop it out of the strut hole. Just like that. And we're putting the nut back on there so we don't lose it or damage the threads. Next 13mm little bolt which just holds the clip which keeps the brake hose attached to the strut and doesn't rub on stuff. You obviously need to remove that, you don't want to be yanking at that when you take the strut out. There we go. Next is the large nut and bolt at the back, which pinches on to the strut itself, holding it in place. That is a 19mm, I think, either a 19 or a 16, 
and it just undoes. You tap it out with a copper hammer again to release it, and then a punch to get it all the way out. Put it aside. Keep it tidy, don't lose it. There we go. I think that might have been a 16mm as well, but 19 if not, sometimes they're a bit bigger. Then we're using the copper hammer. We're not hitting on the disc here, we're hitting on the hub uh, to knock it down. Now I know there is a lower ball joint bolt removed, but we don't need to do that in this case. This was for something else. I'm tapping up and down on the strut assembly. It's the jolt often that does more work than the actual direction of it because it's quite tight on there. Giving it a wiggle and eventually the strut will be free. Notice I'm just pushing the drive shaft in just to make sure the drive shaft doesn't pop out the gearbox and make sure the ABS line doesn't get in the way. Now at the top of the car we pull the little rubber strip out of the way and then all we need to do is just gently pop the trim up and out of our way. You could use a bottle or a piece of wood or something just to keep it out of your way and there is a 21mm nut that holds the strut in that's the last job now so we're gonna get cheat gun on it again for me it just saves time but i've been there and just used hand tools before it's not a problem so 21 mil all the onions there we go now before we get too excited the strut will of course now fall out if i just leave it like that potentially damaging something. so we hold it with one hand and undo that nut with the other hand until the strut is free. It's got a nylock nut on it, by the way. Hence the effort. There we go. And she's come out. Super job. You can normally just leave the nut in the recess on top of the car. It's not going to go anywhere and it's there for when you get back to it. A bit of a wiggle and a piggle to get the strut out without damaging any ABS wires or the hose. Woohoo! Okay, at this point... Either you're going to use for yourself some spring compressors that you already have. Maybe you've bought some for this job. They're not that expensive, about 20 to 30 pounds for a set that I like using here. Mine are getting pretty worn out now, but I have used them for maybe 15 years. Alternatively, get some beers, go to a nearby garage and ask them to change the spring for you. As long as you're friendly with them, they'll probably charge you a tenner maybe just to change it out. And it probably is the most dangerous part of this job. Hence the chain, that if all things go wrong, I might get a smack, but at least it won't be flying across the workshop. We're using a 21mm, and we're getting that undone at the top. Ah, sorry, 19mm for the top here, and that's what your 7mm Allen key is for. The 7mm goes in the actual uh, strut itself, the damper bar in the middle there, holds it from spinning. You don't want to grip it with grips, you want to hold it from spinning, and then we use the 19mm to get it off. There's our broken coil spring. Be very cautious with releasing the tension in the coil spring. It could really injure you, could blind you, could kill you, I guess. Compare your new part to the old part. Make sure you have the correct coil spring. They often can be handed left to right. Not always, but they can be. They also have a one way up, usually, uh, defined by the, the shape of the spring. Or sometimes there's a handy arrow. I noticed that they don't put this on anymore and don't just trust it if the writing is the right way up. I've also caught foul of that. So it's worth checking that you've got the right part number, you've been supplied the right part, or just physically it's the same as the part you've removed, which is tricky if the spring is broken, of course. So we're just getting our spring compressors in the right place. You want to get them as far apart as possible in length before you compress, so you get the most amount of compression from them, and also at opposite positions, so 180 degrees out from each other. If they're too close, they'll slide round, and they'll cause the spring to be in an odd position. I did find that these springs are very soft, and very tall so I had to use as much compression as I could get and then still I had to squeeze the top on and I could just get the few threads. Make sure you get the order of all the parts in the right way and if there's a top strut bearing there that's worn out if you can feel it in your hand that it's all grindy and horrible replace it. Again about 10 to 15 pounds and this is the time to do it. We then use the 7mm allen key and the 19mm spanner to tighten up that nut in the middle without spinning the damper within its core. Giving it a buzz up to the correct torque of 75 newton meters. Gently and evenly remove the spring compressors. Nice and gently. There we go. Take the chain out of the way and make sure the spring is seated correctly. That's what I'm just checking for there. Now with the strut all aligned in the correct orientation, popping it back in the car. Again. 79 75 newton meters for this one 
So that's what I set my gun up to. Three Ugga Guggas is normally around there. And I'm just aligning the tower up. Getting it, make sure it's in its right position. There we go, giving it a wiggle. And then sending it home. Next thing to do is there's a little nobule on the back of the strut. Uh, or the damper, whichever you want to call it. The shocker, the strut, the damper. Uh, there is a correct one, but I won't argue with you. Make sure they're lines with the slot in the hub. If it doesn't, give it a tap round until it does. And then as you jack up, give it a little tap with a hammer. And you'll find slowly it'll slide its way on home. Nearly there. Just giving it a tap round to make sure she's lined up. And then as we apply the pressure and a little tap for a little bit of a shock, you see the strut just dropping in place there until it's home, which it is. At this point, reversal of the process, basically. So we're going to put the bolt straight through the back and the nut. And we're going to send that one home and talk to spec. Yep, 55 newton meters. Just rerouting the ABS wire. Make sure that's in its clips and places so it doesn't rub and cause you problems later on. We're then putting the anti-roll bar link back in. You might need a lever bar again to put some tension on the anti-roll bar, be able to get it back in its position. There he goes. And then 16mm nut. You need to do the same as you did earlier. Hold the nut, hold the centre of the uh, anti-roll bar link joint, turn that. 13mm, as I mentioned earlier. See, it won't buzz on, so by hand again. Once they spin, that's it, they spin. Doesn't mean they're worn out, it's just the way it is. 43 newton meters on the spanner, and she's tight. 13 mil, don't take much, all that's holding on is the brake hose. And then finally, the center nut on the drive shaft. It is very tight. You can get away with possibly not undoing that, but I prefer to do so to stop the shaft coming out of the gearbox. And then a blunt chisel just to tap home the little safety clip part of the nut so it doesn't come undone. Thank you for watching. Indeed, thanks for watching. Click all the buttons, click all the bells, give it a thumbs up. All done. Piggy out.